Hello there, and welcome to this week's Concept Map presentation. My name is Liam Highland, and I'm the lead F2 rep for NUH. So today I'm going to briefly be covering how to apply a structured approach to the assessment and management uh, of a patient presenting with a rash. So the conditions I'll be covering um, in relation to different types of rash can actually be usefully grouped into four different areas. Uh, so these are urticaria, erythema, blistering disorders, and purpura and vasculitis. Going on to urticaria first, uh, this is a very common presentation and can present in many different ways with varying degrees of severity and also with many other associated features. Uh, such as urticaria with anaphylaxis, urticaria with angioedema, and then urticaria uh, isolated by itself. Angioedema uh, is very similar in a lot of ways to anaphylaxis uh, in that they both have swelling of the subcutaneous tissue. But noticeably with angioedema, these lesions are rarely itchy. And this is, this is in stark contrast to the intense pruritus, which is often associated with an urticarial type rash. So here we've got the flow chart for the diagnosis of urticaria. If it's produced uh, upon firm stroking, then it's defined as dermographism. If it's produced by exercise, heat or emotion, then it could be cholinergic. And if it's produced by foods, textiles, cosmetics, uh, it's called contact urticaria. And I'd say that in any of these uh, instances, the most important thing to do is to remove the actual causative agent causing the urticarial rash and subsequently treat uh, with an antihistamine. And I'd just like to mention that uh, if at any point during this presentation, uh, you want to uh, grasp a greater understanding uh, upon each of the information on each of the slides, and uh, then you know, do feel free to pause and to go through the information as we progress through this presentation. So the skin itself is the largest organ in the body, and as such, it can be affected by uh, primary disorders of uh, the skin, or um, it can manifest as different signs and symptoms of systematic illness. And we're just going to be going through um, a variety of different conditions that as such can affect the skin in such a way. So the second type of rash that we're gonna come on to is uh, erythema. So this is red skin and specifically defined as redness that blanches on pressure. So typical symptoms uh, that can be associated with this uh, include red, painful and itchy skin, uh, particularly over a large area. And this ties in with a condition uh, called erythroderma. And this is specifically defined as an intense erythema and having at least 90% of the skin surface area affected. And this condition itself can result from a number of different causes. So uh, one being shock, and shock itself can occur uh, following vasodilation, fluid loss, or it can be endotoxin related. And striking clinical features uh, with either um, erythema and particularly erythroderma is the fact that the heat radiated um, by these patients is very striking and very intense. And as a result, it can lead to um, dysfunction uh, with thermoregulation. And then moving on to the next um, clinical condition, uh, which is necrotizing fasciitis. So this presents after an insect bite or a wound or an abscess. And it's typically characterized by fever, uh, vesicle formation, and uh, with serous fluid drainage. And the actual erythema, it rapidly spreads across the body. Pain might also be a presenting symptom or complaint. And it's typically caused by streptococcal and or anaerobic uh, bacteria, uh, which can rapidly spread. 
It is important uh, whenever you're seeing a patient uh, presenting with uh, a particular rash or a red rash in this case to obtain a history of previous skin conditions and ascertain if they've recently used any form of steroids at all. So uh, the most common uh, precipitating diagnosis is actually psoriasis. Uh, other causes can include uh, eczema, uh, and it's also uh, favorable to ask about any particular irritants or uh, allergic contact factors um, and to treat concomitant infection if they're also presenting with that as well. It's also worth mentioning, going back to erythroderma, that this particular condition can occur in patients that have uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma or lymphocytic leukemia, uh, and that it's always uh, beneficial to actually check to see if they have any uh, lymphadenopathy or organomegaly, specifically hepatosplenomegaly. On to the next uh, form of diagnosis. So we've got toxic shock syndrome, uh, which has both menstrual and non-menstrual forms. And it's uh, very important when you're taking the history from these sorts of patients to see if they've had any uh, recent tampon use, uh, which is often the precipitating cause. So um, in non-menstrual cases, predisposing factors can include uh, intravenous drug administration, HIV, burns, or postpartum patients. Um, and they typically, uh, in both menstrual and, and non-menstrual forms, present with uh, fever and severe hypertension. Other clinical conditions such as Stephen Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis uh, are both dermatological emergencies and do require swift recognition. And there's a particular sign by the name of Nikolsky's sign, uh, which is defined as a gentle rubbing of the skin causing desquamation. And it's important to recognize, that, recognize this uh, particular sign. Um, it helps to differentiate Stephen Johnson syndrome from the usual macular papular eruptions, uh, because in this particular condition, there is mucosal involvement, um, ocular, oral, genital, and uh, pain is very, very severe. And with this condition, there is possible progression to toxic epidermal necrolysis. Toxic epidermal necrolysis is specifically defined as full thickness uh, loss of the epidermis. And typical symptoms uh, for either Stephen Johnson syndrome and or toxic epidermal necrolysis um, include uh, prodromal flu-like symptoms and or non-specific upper respiratory tract illness. A painful rash uh, typically starts or presents itself on the trunk uh, and then spreads rapidly over several hours to days to involve the face and or the limbs. It could also, as previously mentioned, have other mucosal involvement such as mouth ulcers or soreness, painful or uh, irritated eyes, and other important areas to cover in the history do include taking a good effective drug history to try and ascertain if the patient started uh, any newly commenced medication. Uh, such symptoms can occur five to 28 days after starting causative medications. And it's also worthwhile to ask about past medical history, in particular HIV, as previously mentioned. Just to go over some more clinical definitions. So macules, uh, this means flat lesions and um, can occur through such drug eruptions, um, such as from allopurinol, gold, sulfonamides, sulfonylureas, and isoniazids. Then moving on to the next type of rash in our list, uh, which is blisters. So blisters are accumulations of fluid, uh, but they may contain blood. And the, the differential diagnosis of blistering eruptions is actually based on uh, separating it into uh, painless and painful presentations. So here we have the algorithm for uh, a patient presenting with uh, different blistering lesions uh, spread out into uh, acute and chronic causes. If we are suspecting uh, an autoimmune cause, uh, 
it is worthwhile bearing in mind that we would ask for urgent dermatology uh, clinic um, input uh, and or to refer the patient on for an urgent dermatology clinic appointment. Uh, if, in, if in such cases we are suspecting either Stephen Jobson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis, it's very important that we do assess the patient from an, uh, from an A to E perspective. Um, other clinical uh, conditions such as paraneoplastic pemphigus can present, and this is usually associated uh, with hematological malignancies as previously mentioned. It's also worth mentioning acute graft versus host disease, and this can occur after uh, allergenic um, hematopoietic stem cell transplant, and there's often a reaction of donor immune cells against host tissues. Again, as mentioned, do feel free to pause the presentation at any point if you're wanting to uh, gain a greater appreciation and knowledge with uh, specific signs and symptoms of different rash presentations. And then moving on to our final group uh, for rashes, and that is uh, purpura. So um, purpura uh, is caused by red cells leaking out of blood vessels into the dermis layer. And um, this is uh, specifically summarized in the next few slides. So the first cross point is actually a platelet count. And again, what we'd uh, be looking for here, uh, particularly if there was a, a vasculitis presentation, we'd be have, wanting to have a look at the lower limbs. And we'd be wanting to see if the lesions themselves are palpable, if they appear to be polymorphic, and if they're painful. Um, so if we were to go based on different diagnosis, we, could, we would see that with Henoch Shunline purpura, um, it would often have associated urinary symptoms, abdominal pain, joint pain, and possible fractures. Other conditions such as consumption coagulopathy, uh, this can uh, include disseminated intravascular um, coagulation. And other such conditions such as thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura and hemolytic uremic syndrome are also conditions that are worth bearing in mind when you're seeing patients that present with purpuric rashes. So it's, it is important to mention that most uh, skin conditions are not actually life-threatening. Um, and that it's always the case that taking a careful uh, calculated history and performing a good thorough examination is always required to actually help elicit features uh, in the early stages of life-threatening illness. Um, again, as, as we've mentioned on this slide here, as we've highlighted, it's important to rule out any red flag signs. Um, if necessary, and if particularly concerned, then do seek specialist advice early and don't ever miss anaphylaxis or meningococcal sepsisemia. And just as a brief conclusion to this uh, talk, uh, I'd just like to say that this presentation's purpose is actually to guide your thinking process when you encounter a patient who presents with a rash. Uh, it's not meant to be a tool that you use to actually help diagnose your patients with, um, and that as such, you will always need to exercise clinical judgment and consider the clinical context of your patient's presentation in order to make an accurate diagnosis. Okay, thank you very much for listening to this presentation.